Well, this is our own rule. You want to... 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 And you know, you any Absolutely, we plenty. Uh, and uh, just to put it out there, not all about me, it's about the other people that, like me, live in a community or community. Um, about only two years ago, when an uh, ex MP of Thanet, uh, South Thanet, he denied there is any racism in Thanet, I only put a call out in a news, local newspaper. For people that experience racism, can they let the local MP know and send a copy to me? And it was a dossier of and um, a report of racism were sent to the MP. And um, yes, he he didn't want to, obviously he didn't want us to take it further. He called it it is a political game, but it was heartbreaking to see even. Uh, a six month old baby where we're racially abused. Uh, we want to build a community. We want to build a community that peace and justice uh, be provided for everybody. We're a community that welcomes everyone. And everybody uh, will come to here. They are not just come here to take your job. They not come here to take your home. That's a big media outlet and big some politician putting these kind of words out there to get us against each other. Let's remind people. I studied um, British uh, citizenship test. Uh, well, if you ask some of the question, most of the British people doesn't know. In the history of in the 80s, the government sold the council houses. They called the right to buy. And then government after government since they fail to build houses. Therefore, the number of the people waiting for social housing has been bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh, the take, so the immigrant or the one you call an immigrant come by boat, they cannot straight go to the council houses. They're absolutely, they're human, they're human. They, these humans, they're not going on our council houses. We know, the far right know, you have to live five years in a town be a, to be able to be added into the council houses or house social housing. So the, the human that come by boat will never be the person that go to the council houses. The, those far right groups, the, some politicians, the media outlets, they have managed to get us poor against each other. You are, we want to build a community. We want to build a community there is no food bank. The politicians don't take picture with a food bank to think they're helping people. We should not have a food bank in the first place. We should not have the waiting list for our houses. That community is full of peace and justice. Uh, as an councillor, do the, uh, the local inhabitants of Paris communicate this uh, to you like that? Uh, the problem related to um, a lack of Absolutely. Uh, government after the government, they've made the local council poorer and poorer. They haven't put enough money in the council. And a, a bringing, a go back to the 80s when they're too much uh, contracted to the private companies that made the council have the e easier job but not bringing much money back to the council. Those contracted jobs outside the council, it doesn't employ people directly with the council and they're not bringing regular money to the council. What they do, they bring a lump of money that temporary for solve the problem, but that temporary solving is not me to create higher, higher problems. Mm. Uh, uh, an ex Tory councillor in, uh, he was Ramsgate, I forget his name now, he's uh, 
Steve McKee. Hiya. Can you see uh, MP. Yeah. So did he uh, cause uh, a lot of friction in the Senate? Uh, Craig McKinley. Yeah, Craig, Craig McKinley, McKinley the, the South uh, Senate ex, uh, MP. Yeah, uh, yeah uh, because he was one of the founders of UKIP. Uh, was he? Yeah, before he joined the Tory. Yeah. And uh, he tried to become an MP many times in the midway. He yeah. didn't go in. So he tried his luck in 2015 in Senate, when Nigel Farage, his uh, friend, was standing. Uh, and then uh, uh, he uh, people uh, to stop Nigel Farage. Uh, some people have voted for him, and uh, he got in. But he did cause so much uh, fractions in in Sane. In fact, he caused more fraction in cons- local conservative in Sane than in in whole Sane. That's mm. why they lost very badly in in Sane as well. So, so, so do you think it will cause, might, might it cause some, oh well, yeah, you said it's causing friction. Absolutely, uh, you know, uh, during uh, Black Lives Matter, he was the one come out, he was saying, uh, every life is matter, all our statues where there's been uh, names to be moved, they can bring it to, to Senate. He invited all the statues where we're knocked down, or they are in a list to be locked down, bring them down to, 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 uh, Thailand. And we did answer to that. We had an answer for them. We said, put in your own front garden if you want it, but don't call it Thailand. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, this is a great day for Dover. It's a great day for, uh, humanity. Because the human people, it come to uh, our shore for years. This is not just today we've seen this. We, we had the Roma people 50, 60 years ago, they came to here. We, we had the, the, the Pilgrim Christian where they came to stay in Dover town for, for a long time. Uh, they used it as a rest place before they go to Canterbury. Uh, to finish their pilgrimage. So Dover has always been a welcoming place. This is show. This is a day for a humanity. Uh, can I ask you a personal question about your, your heritage? You're, you're, you're from poor, well, I'm a Kurdish, yeah, originally yeah. Kurdish from Iraq. Um, what was what, what the, the circumstances about you leaving the uh, Kurdistan? Was there like a uh, destabilization of the world? Of course, our country, Kurdistan, as you know, uh, after the Second World War, divided between four countries. And, uh, and uh, the, uh, each, each part of Kurdistan was uh, uh, owned by different government. Each government, one by one, they put, even now in Turkey, they put a Kurdish MP in the prison. And the whole world not talk about that. An MP, democratically elected by the Kurdish people in Turkey, a member of a Turkish parliament, now serving time in a prison for just saying his mother was Kurdish. His mother is a Kurdish. For naming a Kurdish, you're not allowed to, in the Turkish parliament to say I'm a Kurd. Where is the two state solution for the Kurdish people? Uh, Saddam in Iraq civilizes people. It killed 5,000 Kurdish people over night, in over three days by chemical weapons. All of all then said nothing. In 2003, when America and Britain invaded Iraq, five million people on the street of London, they said, this is not going to work. Nobody listened. They invaded. And the constitution, we, we, we see the result of that, what's happening. There's still no stab- stabilization in Iraq. So that was an angel, but you needed it to work with the local people, how we change that system, how we implemented the human rights, not to go from out in. They did the same to Afghanistan. You look at the Taliban was the worst enemy in the world, and then they made a deal with them, and then 
Lele Ibaki. So many people now, their life is in danger in Afghanistan because of returning I really don't uh, know that side because I'm not involved. We see what you're doing. We see that kind of work. What I can see this is something selling arms. We need a war. These countries, they think we need a war to sell our arms. And we sell our arms. We do a deal of arms with them as much as we can sell our arms. Our factory can go, but we don't think about how many humans will be killed by the end of that bullet when we sell it. The oil have a big, uh, big uh, answer for all the wars in the Middle East. The, uh, Diamond have a big answer in Africa, where may they may or or made them to leave, uh, and the country those countries slowly be taken by the people that they want their diamond. And uh, yes, or when Iraq war or oil company were taken straight away by the foreign companies were related to Britain or America. And some of them still contracted big companies that are related to, uh, they have a contract in America or Britain. Jordan. Are they American bases in Jordan or was that actually in Syria, do you think? Uh, the American base is, is in Cyprus. The American bases are in Jordan as well. Because they are watching uh, the people that they call their enemies. They're using those places. Um, uh, of course, the Angelique is in, in Turkey. Uh, so there are places, are, and there are places they know where those people, they so call it enemy, yeah, but they kill so much human beings, so much uh, civilians to get those people. You look at the leader of Hamas who were killed in Tehran. Overnight they know where he sleeps. If we know there is the, how much water on the moon or on a star? How come we don't know these people? We call them enemies straight directly. Go to them instead to kill the civilians. Yeah. So it's kind of like they don't want peace, do they? That's what they. I don't think they will. I don't think and, until you stop the selling the up still to mm. to different countries and making money out of them. Peace will not be there. You can't fume, put a fuel on fire and expect the fire cool down. You can't put fuel on fire and expect it the fire down. Why don't the, the Arab countries and the Iran come together to say no more to the Americans and uh, to stand up for their people? I think they not united themselves as well. If you look at Iran is a Shia, Iraq is changed from Sunni now half Shia, half Sunni. Uh, you look at uh, the other Gulf countries, the Sunni country. So there is a creation of a division in, among those community in themselves. So they will, if they're not united themselves, that is easy to uh, more break them up. You got family in, in um, Syria. I lost all my families in a war. You, you so lost your whole family. All my family. So I'm, I have no. Uh, the community in here is my family. When, when, when did you lose your family? Some of them during the uh, invasion of Iraq. Some of them before that, and some of them are uh, died. So kind of, I left. Now 
with the people in this country. This is a home. Well, I'm so sorry about that. As, as a citizen of the UK, uh, you're welcome here anyway. Thank you. Thank you for the interview. Thank you. You're very welcome. Cheers. This is uh, ex. Uh, this is uh, Eric. Um, what's your name? It's Eric Siegel. Eric Siegel. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, you 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 be able to hear it over over I this? Think so, yeah. yeah. Okay. Totally. Totally. Yeah. So you can move away. From yeah, move away. Yeah. That's better. Yeah. Mm. Go. Um, so my name's Eric Siegel, yeah? You're a member of a union, are you? Yes, I'm a member of Unite Union, yes. Proud to be a member of Unite. Uh, your general secretary is not very supportive of this issue. Of what? Of, um, so support for Palestine. I think you find the union is, but the union's not just one block of people that nod their heads when something's said. There's a fight going on inside the union for because it's a democratic union, dem mm. democratic organisation, with policies decided at conferences and so on. And uh, I think you'll find that the move is towards giving uh, mass support to standing up against uh, racism in whatever form that it comes. And also in support of the Palestinian cause. You know, no one uh, can, uh, and I'm speaking as a union member, none of us can uh, support what's happening in uh, Gaza and on the left bank now. Uh, no one can support uh, people being murdered in their, in their homes or being blown to pieces. And our union is part of that. In fact, we've... Uh, our union reps that work in the munitions factories uh, and so on, creating weapons that are sold to Israel as one place. But they, you know, our union is is formulating policy so that workers can uh, oppose the manufacture of weapons that are used uh, in war crimes without uh, without. Uh, without fear, you know, without fear of losing their jobs. Because, you know, that's the reason that people work. Yeah. Um, you're an ex-Labour. Are you still Labour? No, I, I was expelled about 35 years ago because I led, I was one of the people that led the fight against the poll tax. <laughs> I was jailed for uh, a month. Yeah, for refusing to play, and I'm proud to say I've never paid the poll tax. Excellent. All right. That's uh, that's uh, yeah, yeah. It's my Very badge of courage. Oh, I see you. Yes, yeah. thank you. Um, so, what what are you now? Are you are you, you you're still a member of Unite? Are you yeah. a member of any other party? Yeah, I'm a member of uh, the Socialist Party, which was the militant which yeah. led the poll tax struggle. Yeah. Um, proud to be a member of the Socialist Party. Um, <laughs> I'm, wa I'm waving goodbye to... Hold on, I've got... Yeah. 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 Hello, Eric. Hello, comrades. <laughs> Sarah, if I can continue, Sarah was... Uh, uh, one of the youngest members of the Labour Party, when I was in the Labour Party, all those years ago. And she was uh, one of our delegates to the constituency Labour Party from the Labour Party Young Socialists. She was 14 when she was there. And they, and she, her and my sister Vivian struck terror in the heart of the Labour bureaucracy when they got up to speak, you know. Yeah. <laughs> And they were members of Militant as well. Good, good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I kind of like her. She's not in the Labour Party now. Yeah. She was a Labour councillor up in uh, Gravesend. She's resigned because, yeah. of, because of what's going on in the Labour yeah. Party. Everybody's being chucked out of the Labour Party. Yeah. yeah. It's an empty shell. We need to build a new mass workers' party. Yeah. And uh, we need the unions to lead that fight, to build that, that party. And the way that Labour Party's policies are going at the moment, I think... Uh, They'll have no choice other than to 
stop paying our funds into uh, into the Labour Party. Well, why is it Jeremy Corbyn on fighting the new plan to get that all the social? I I I've got no idea why he he just he he seems too um, timid to be quite honest. Yeah. I mean he's been through a lot. His policies that he stood on. I support, and many, many hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people, support, uh, supported him. And do you remember when um, Mick Lynch set, set up Enough is Enough? Mm. I think it was about a million people joined immediately. We thought, well, come on, Corbyn, here's, you know, here's something yeah, that you can yeah. stand in front of. But they stepped back from that as well. Hopefully, now that it's been expelled and there's a group of left MPs in Parliament that they'll understand that people need a new party of the working class, exactly. a new mass workers. So, do you, don't, do you think? What do you think of the workers' party? Is that a, just a, a George Galloway vehicle? Uh, unfortunately, yes. I mean, we did we did you know work work with them and in uh, the trade union and socialist coalition because one of our uh, we stood, yeah, Tusk. Mm. Uh, we had 40 candidates stand in the general election. Mm. In some areas where the Workers' Party stood, like in Dover, um, we, we had a discussion. We said, well, we won't stand anyone in Dover because we've got someone, if you won't stand anyone in folks. And so it was an agreement between us. Mm. But that's clever, isn't it? I mean, uh, yeah. so, so, well, in, during the general election, we that was basically standing against each other. Which is stupid. Yeah. Pointless. Yeah. I mean, and, that, uh, if we've learned... Pro-Palestine people standing Yeah, exactly. Yeah. If we've learned anything, it's, uh, surely it has to be that unity is strength. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And the small differences don't matter, really, do they? Well, or, you discuss them. You, dis- you discuss talk them out. I mean, if I, like, I've been a union rep, I've, I've been a union rep for four years and I can uh, re- recollect. And uh, there's always differences of opinions mm-hmm. in a workplace where you come to, a, you know, you come to a, 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 a sort of uh, agreement between yourselves and that's how you go forward. Mm. It's nothing to split on. Now here comes a personal question, a big personal question. Sorry. You're Jewish, aren't you, Alex? Uh, I come from a Jewish background, yes, Jewish of course background. I do, yeah. yeah. And have you, have you ever had trouble from people attacking you in the past for being Jewish? Oh. Well, when I was 14, I was beaten up by mates, yeah, oh, okay. and kicked to the ground yeah. with other people standing around. But to be truthful, you know, as I've said before, you know, no one can defend what is happening in Israel. There has to be a, uh, a socialist solution to what is happening in Israel, a two-state solution. Uh, although that is uh, coming under question now as well. But it has to be part of a move towards a uh, socialist federation of the Middle East. And, you know, all of the countries in the Middle East, Iran, uh, Jordan, Iraq, everywhere, they're in turmoil as the, uh, they're under corrupt uh, regimes. And ordinary, it's always working class people, whether you're from, you're Arab or Sunni Arab or, or, uh, or whatever. They're always, uh, what's the word? Uh, tension between, between, and the only people that suffer are ordinary working class people, whatever you, whatever your nationality or religion or whatever. And it's only working class that can come, that can provide a, a solution to what is happening. And, I mean, I've been on loads of demonstrations against what is happening. But I, I you know, I'm a, a revolutionary socialist first, and, a, and I'm proud of that. You know, my religion doesn't even come to it. In fact, I, you know, I gave up religion like donkeys is. Yeah, many Jewish people, or, you know, sort of descended from Jewish people, they're, they're secular, they're not, they're, they're not really... Can you really call yourself Jewish? I mean... My my father was a Christian. And I don't call myself a Christian. You know, Pete. Other people classify me. You know, like you said, you're Jewish, like, or you come from a Jewish. Family. Yeah, I classify you, know, so, you know, instantly because I thought 
Yeah. Sure. That's, a, that's, a, that's the point, you see, because um, what's the thing? People, people are saying you're, you're attacking Jewish people because you're pro-Palestine or you're, you're, you're against the Labour's attack on them. Corbyn. Corbyn, etc. Yeah. So, um, uh, this is kind of like uh, part of the palm, part, deliberate part yeah. of people yeah. by, by the, the, the establishment yeah. Yeah. To, to create division amongst us. Exactly. Uh, when I represented someone on the shop floor, right, yeah. if someone had a grievance or, or they were disciplined, right, yeah. they didn't, I didn't say to them, hold on a minute, before I represent you, are you uh, a Muslim? Are you a Christian? Are you Jewish? No, of course not. You're working class, you're a workmate. I represent you the best of my ability, and that's how I think that we should work. Religions uh, are uh, and Zionism, they're just diversions, they're, they're things that uh, divide us. Uh, Zionism was, uh, was a, a, an issue that was, uh, was hated by Jewish people in, uh, in Poland. In the beginning, in it, it was I thought it was just a joke. Yeah, yeah. And then you have the Second World War. Mm. You know, and, and then you have to say, well, you know, when people came out of the concentration camps, like many of my relations, right, who lived through it, all were murdered, right? And they come out and they, uh, they wanted somewhere to go. Some folk went back to Poland or Russia and got murdered, right? Mm. And some came out and they said, well, what do we do now? And the, the authorities, the French, British, Americans said, oh, we've got nowhere to put you, back in the concentration camps, right? So then they said, well, we, that's not for us. And then people come along and said, here we've bought these, uh, we've bought land in this wonderful place called uh, Israel. Right? And they, what would you do? Yeah. Europe has always had a problem with racism, hasn't it? Yeah. I mean, we had pog pogroms yeah. before the Second World War. Uh, uh, and in this country, uh, uh, they're, they're calling uh, Muslims racist against uh, Jewish people, etc. Um, they're not Arlo. How can they be? I'm, I'm represent. I'm I'm someone that was, did the campaign with a Muslim woman, mm. right, to stand in Folkestone. Mm. And during that, and who who are the racists when when Starmer turns round? During the election, right? right? And I'm working with to get a, uh, a Bangladeshi woman elected, and Starman's saying, and these Bangladeshis coming over here, you know. I mean, who's the racist? Mm. Yeah, yeah um, have you heard of the field report? Yes, of course I have, yeah. Right. You think there's a racism problem in Labour with uh, Starman? I think it's a, uh, it's a political issue. It's, uh, it's about class politics. They they wanted to control the Labour Party, the right wing, the people that um, have business interests and uh, who are who want the capitalist system to continue. And they saw uh, Corbyn as an obstacle. I mean, his, his vote in 2017 and 2019 far exceeded on, uh, what Labour's vote was previously and there was tens of thousands if not hundreds of thousands of young people joining the Labour Party because of the policies right which challenged capitalism which challenged big business and let's be honest about it that is why they wanted him out of the Labour Party they didn't want a leader who challenged the capitalism and big business and that, that's it religion was a, a was the way one way that they did it. They 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 used everything to try and divide the Labour Party and put people against it. So. Another number of social saying that Starman was a Trojan horse put in there by the secret services. I don't. I, don't I, I think a lot of this is sort of conspiracy theory. There is. That, that's my, uh, you know, people looking for reasons when the reasons are quite clear. The policies, decent homes for people, decent pay, uh, decent jobs, uh, uh, homes and everything else. Fighting for those things, that's what matters. It's not all the other rubbish. Mm.
Anyway, my throat's getting. Okay, Eric, thanks for the interview. I really cheers. Oh, it's been lovely. A nice speech. talk to you for the first yeah, time. Yeah, we're always online, but it's yeah. better talking like this. Yeah. Right. Hi, your name's Hilary. Hilary, who, what? Hilary Tutor. Hilary Tutor, yeah. that's a good name. Yeah. Teacher. I was a teacher, yeah. Oh. I'm a retired primary school teacher. Okay. Yeah. And you're, you're, you're a member of the local trades council in Dover? I'm not in Dover, no. I'm the president of the North East Kent Trades Union Council, which is uh, Canterbury, Thanet, Whitstable, that, that area. Oh, you represent me then. Do I? Yeah. Okay. Um, and uh, you're, you're the chair of Khan? I'm, I'm, I don't have an official position in Khan. I don't know, I'm not sure that Khan has any official positions right at the moment. We've kind of resurrected ourselves in the, you know, as a result of the far right activity in recent weeks we're just getting going again yeah. but we, we were uh, co-hosts of today's protesting demo against fascists yeah. well, I understand there's kind of like some disagreement with anti-fascist groups um, well, what was that, what's that over? Do you know? well what I would say to that is at the moment you know the far right are organising themselves we need to be um, out on the street in as big numbers as possible and we need to be united. So, to be honest, I'm not actually interested in, in talking about divisions. What I'm interested in is talking about unity. I, yeah, I, you know, I will work with anybody and stand with anybody uh, on these demos who is against the far right and is against fascists and who says refugees are welcome here. Those are our common uh, interests and you know you can have discussions with people about other issues but on the issue of uh, standing up to racism you know we need to come together and and stand together has, has there in the, in the last few years been a problem in Kent regarding the fascists and the far right well I mean they're always there aren't they and, um, you know lurking in the gutter which is where we like to keep them most of the time. Uh, fairly recently, maybe last year, the National Front turned up in Dover. And I was one of the people uh, opposing them down by the court area. Um, so far in Planet, we haven't seen any organised activity by the far right, but you know we need to expect it and be ready to oppose it at any moment. Okay, I don't, I don't know what else I can ask you really, is not for that. But as, uh, you weren't expecting any account of protest, at least, were you? Well, we were, because um, Patriotic Alliance, or Alternative, I think they're called, you know, they change their names all the time, um, had called a protest in Dover. They, they'd called that several months ago, so, so they were definitely planning to be here. Um, and we were expecting them to be here today, and we were here to um, to oppose them and to show our opposition and our support for refugees. So it was great when the news came through. We somebody on had a, a photo of their poster, the far right poster, with cancelled in in big letters. So that's you know that's great. That's a victory. I think we take that as a victory. We kept them out of Dover today. Do you think uh, that might have something, something to do with the police presence here? Or, or I'm not something. sure they're that bothered about the police. Yeah. I, I'm not sure they're bothered about the police. You know, a lot of these have got criminal convictions going back years and years. They're really nasty people. Anyway, so. I think what has happened over the last couple of weeks uh, across the country is, you know, people at first were taken aback when we saw far right rampaging on our streets, but people very quickly came together and in their hundreds and in some places in their thousands went out on the streets standing together for their communities and I think that that is what is uh, stopping the far right from being so confident about you know, just thinking that they can come into our towns and cities and destroy our communities. We're not going to let them do that. Excellent. Thank you for the interview, Hilary. You're very welcome. You are powerful. And to you. Thanks.